down here in Sharpsburg, uh, Maryland today. We're going to visit the Antietam Battlefield. I'm here with uh, Dr. Uh, Bob Blake from the Harrisburg area and we're going to feature the Antietam uh, Battlefield today and uh, talk a little bit about history. I'm here with Dr. Bob Blake uh, from the Harrisburg area and Bob does a, would you tell me, a first person, first person historical interpreter. And what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to talk about the battle at Antietam. We're going to hit some of the high points and talk about a few of the important people and just have a nice time. The Dunkard no, Church. It, there's, we'll see it when we go out, but there's a lot of the battle was fought around that. That was the point of reference for attacks. And, they didn't get along too well. No, they, they did not. Lincoln wanted him to act like a fighting general and McClellan wanted to be an organizing general. And, and he, he was just offended that President Lincoln would try to help him be a better general. The battlefield. Off to our left is the Dunkard Church and there's a high, high part of the battle was called Miller's Cornfield. I don't see a church. Yeah, we're going to have to get up over the hump. Okay. And then to the right, there's you'll see a you'll see like a fire tower down on the end. It's actually a monument, and you'll see those double line of fences. That's where the sunken road was. So part one of the battle was over to our left. Part two, Richardson's crew came up through the the fields and attacked the sunken road, and ultimately pushed the Confederates out. There's a couple of reenactors out here in the field. We're going to go out and uh, talk to them, see what they uh, have to say. And it's amazing. You look at a cannon and the, the caisson in the back. It took 10, 10 to 12 guys, soldiers, to actually effectively fire the cannon in battle. Private Mac, uh, member of Parker's Battery. Private Black. Is that a congressman over there? Congressman? Is that a congressman over there? That's a doctor. 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 12 pounds with 12 pounds, meaning that the projectile that it fires is 12 pounds. 12 pound round cannonball, solid iron. This, this variation of flag was what was known as the cotton issue. It was all cotton. It had a three-quarter inch orange cotton border around it. The, um, the, star was, uh, the stars were 12. They hadn't put the 13 stars on yet, even though they had recognized Missouri and Kentucky as Confederate states. The cross was a very poorly dyed blue uh, cross, and it faded uh, quickly in uh, service. A lot of the originals that you see now, the cross is actually faded to tan. This is a replica that, like I say, Hood's Texans would have carried into the cornfield on September 17, 1862, along with the big Texas state flag that they carried, uh, which is down in our camp.
gun rifles, correct? Correct. Yeah, smooth bores. These were a lot of these would have been left over from the Mexican War. Short range. They, they're actual cans. They're not repros. Yeah, these are originals. Uh, when some of these are original, and some of them are, might be repos. Interesting little tidbit here. Tidbit here. Bob, uh, Dr. Bob just told me that this battle, Antietam or Sparks, what's that? Sharpsburg. Sharpsburg is another name of the battle, was the founding place of the Red Cross. Clara Barton, founder of the Red Cross, after the battle, there were so many dead and injured on, laying on the battlefield here. It took them days and weeks, not longer, right? Yeah, there, there would have been wounded people here for months. And, and, it, and every house would have locally would have had wounded people, wounded soldiers. Every public building became a hospital. To think of the mess after the battle, they had horses that were dead. You know, all the wounded men, you had to bury the wounded men, you had to bury or burn the horses. 22,717 dead Cas casualties, casualties, dead. casualties at, uh, for this one day battle. The most, most casualties in any one battle in the Civil War in one day. Okay, so we're standing right where the, the Union First Corps under General Hooker would have been attacking the Confederates. And if you can see over in the hill, you see the tall obelisk-like monument? We were just up there. That's a, that was the Confederate line where those the guns that we looked at. The second part of the, the battle at Antietam goes around this sunken road. And the sunken road is just a, a farm road and they were over it so many times and it was muddy and they drive on it wet or dry and, and the road bed would just sink down in <laughs> hence sunken road very common you'll see them you see them all the time in fact there are many battles that were sunken roads involved wide creek it's probably 30 yards wide the union named battles after the creek typically yeah. and the confederate named it after the town and the town's name is uh, sharpsburg, sharpsburg. Uh, but the creek that comes through Sharpsburg is Antietam Creek. Antietam creek. So there you go. Battlefield like this, it's somebody's headquarters. This is uh, General Richardson's headquarters. This is Thomas Francis Meyer, Dublin, Ireland. Quite a gentleman came came to the United States, raised a regiment, became a, a brigade general. Uh, led the Irish in many of the big beginning battles up to the Civil War at Gettysburg. So the Union on the other side, you know, it's a simple bridge. They could have got this without too much work. Or they could have went up creek 100 yards and crossed, or down creek 100 yards and crossed. But Burnside was definitely going to cross this bridge. So his, his underlings come into him and say, the troops are a little unhappy about this task. They're unhappy because they had their whiskey rations taken from them. And I'm being told that if they get their whiskey rations back, they'll take the bridge. So Burnside says, well, if they take the bridge by such a time, I'll double their ration. And the next attack, they take the bridge and chase the Confederates off the hill.
What do you think, Bob? What uh, what happened here? What at, at the conclusion of this battle, Lee went south. Right. And the Union went north. Right. Lee Lee went and crossed the Potomac back into northern Virginia. Um, McClellan and his troops, he just stayed here. Lincoln tried to push him to attack, but he didn't. So the next thing, McClellan gets fired. They bring in new guys, Hooker, and then eventually we get Meade. Um, and we end up, the second attack on uh, the north for Lee is uh, Gettysburg. And that happens in about eight months. Uh, how many miles north of that? Is From that here? 60 to 100? Yeah, 75, I was going to say. A lot of history here, a lot of, uh, a lot of human history here, a lot of suffering went on here. That, a lot of uh, country building. A lot of country building, a lot of things changing. But uh, that concludes our video. Hit the subscribe button as always if you haven't already. Hit the bell if you want to be notified to the next video. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great day.